In this video, we are going to solve an example to compare two uh, scheduling algorithms. One is first come first serve, which is FCFS and round robin scheduling or RRS. So consider three processes P1, P2 and P3. So their arrival times are given over here 0, 1 and 3 respectively. The time that is required in the current CPU burst is also given 5, 7 and 4. So we have to find out the completion order of the three processes under these two scheduling algorithms and it is also given that for round robin scheduling we have to take a CPU quantum of two time units. So let's start with the first come first serve scheduling algorithm. So at time 0 there is only one process in the system which is P1. So P1 is scheduled by the OS and it will run for one time unit when process P2 arrives in the system but since we are following first come first serve and there is no preemption over here so P1 will continue running and P2 will be put in the ready queue. So when P2 has run P1 has run till 3 again now process P3 arrives in the system but again since we are following FCFS P1 will continue to execute and P3 will also be put in the ready queue. So P1 since it is running and the time that is required by it is 5 time units. So it will finish off at 5 and it will uh, execute and be out of the system. So P1 is no longer there. Now in the ready queue we have P2 and P3. So following for first come first serve P2 will be served first. So P2 is given the CPU and since its time requirement is of 7 time units it will run from 5 to 12 and then at 12 P3 will be given and it will run for 4 time units so from 12 to 16. So the order in which these processes are completing is as we know first come first serve so P1 arrived first then P2 arrived then P3 so in that order they are being served so P1, P2 and P3. Now if we check for the round robin scheduling, so we start with process P1 which has arrived at time 0. So P1 has been scheduled on the CPU. At time unit 1, P2 has arrived in the system but for the round robin scheduling, the time quantum is 2. So P2 is there in the ready queue and P1 is running till 2 time units. Now at time unit 2, so since there is only one other process which is P2, P2 will start running and P1 will go back to the ready queue. So P2 starts running and at time 3, we see that P3 has arrived in the system. So now P3 also joins the ready queue. P2 is running, so P2 is no longer there in the ready queue. Uh, P2 finishes off its quantum of two time units at four. So if we check what is there in the ready queue, so P1 is there. Now P1 will start running and P2 will go back to the ready queue. During this time, P1 has already run for two time units. So it is at three. P2 has also run for two time units. So remaining time is five. Now P1 is running again, so it will run from 4 to 6, so time left is 1 and now P1 is back in the ready queue. Now we see that the next process that is there in the ready queue is P3. So P3 will run for 2 time units and now the time required left is only 2, so P3 will also go back to the ready queue after executing for two time units. Now the next process in the ready queue is P2. So P2 runs for two time units. Time left is now three. So again now P2 goes back to the ready queue and P1 starts running. So only one time unit was left. So P1 runs only from 10 to 11 and finishes off here. So P1 is out of the system now. So it's finished its time uh, that was required for execution. Next is P3. 
So P3, because it requires only two time units, it, it will run from 11 to 13. So now time, it's also finished. So it is also out of the system. And then finally P2 will run for the remaining three time units from 13 to 16. So if we see what is the order of completion, we see that P1 is finishing at 11, then P3 is finishing and then P2 is finishing. So the order of completion is P1, P3, P2. So we have created these Gantt charts so that you can use the same explanations if you are required to find the waiting time or the turnaround time of the processes.